first vlog of 2020. I hope you all started your new year right. Hope everything's going great. This is gonna be the first poker session. We're gonna head down to the Flamingo. I'm not at the Flamingo, I actually parked across the street at the Mirage, because the Flamingo's right across the street. So we're gonna walk down towards that way. And yeah, um, Flamingo spreads a whole bunch of one, two. There's some spread limit, I believe, and uh, during the World Series of Poker, they also spread some pot limit Omaha. It's a little bit of a hidden room, closer to Las Vegas Boulevard, if you're inside the casino. If you're walking on Las Vegas Boulevard, you actually do have to go inside to be able to see the room. It's not easily visible outside of the room. Um, yeah, the Flamingo is a total rewards. So I got that, I got the WSOP variety. I brought two buy-ins, and uh, it's the end of CES. So last year for CES, I decided to chill out. I went a couple of days, and I wanted to relax on that weekend, because for some reason, CES always tires me out. But this year, I said, I can't miss it. There was over 140,000 or something like that. Over 100,000 people attended CES. So I'm hoping at least 1% of them is interested in poker. And at the end of the whole convention, they're gonna come by, play a couple of games. I chose the Flamingo because it's right next to the link. And that little area of the Las Vegas Strip has been pretty like popular. A lot of people have been going down. It's one of the uh, attractions that people like to go to, especially with the big Ferris wheel, with the new zip line. So I was like, huh, maybe people are gonna walk around Flamingo. I haven't been to that casino yet. It spreads no limit. And uh, yeah. There's the Flamingo. So if you walk down towards Dre's, the poker room is in an entrance right down there. But I'm gonna go the other way. If you walk towards the Ferris wheel in between the Link and the Flamingo, uh, there's an entrance to the Flamingo about midway on the right hand side. Uh, there's actually something cool. They have like a garden where there's like animals that you can walk through. It's a great place to take a date during the day, take some kids, go see the animals. Uh, let's go over there. Let's check it out. Right out here is actually the garden area. And this is where you'll be able to bring a date or something, uh, check out some of the animals. Let me see if I can find stuff. It's pretty cool. And it spans around. You could walk around, grab some coffee. I guess they built the buffet right next to it. So maybe you can get seating at the buffet and look at the animals, look at the flamingos and stuff. That's pretty cool. So they're changing it up a little bit. Every time I'm down here on the strip, uh, something brand new is always coming up and they do it really freaking fast. So uh, enough messing around. Let's go get to a table. Let's go play some poker. the bridge crosses from the Caesars Palace across the way. That's where the entrance to the post room is. Like I said, you can't really see it when you walk inside, but on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Flamingo, that's where the poker room's located. We're on the list. It looks like there's only two or three games there. Um, they have that texting Bravo part where you can put in your phone number and they'll just text you when, it when the seat is ready. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna hang out a little bit. And then once we get on the table, we'll see if the uh, table footage works and let's run it up this time. I brought two buy-ins and uh, it looks like the strip's still busy from CES people. So hopefully we can bring some of those CES people onto our tables to make some money. So 
actually the Cromwell, which used to be Bill's. A great story, when I first started playing poker, right when I turned 21, I was always trying to buy into like cheap live stuff because I still had like a great thrill playing live. And they used to have this $20 tournament. It was just, it was basically playing bingo, short stack, but they also did spread a 1-1 one -one game. So I would buy in for like a hundred bucks because that's all I could afford at the time. And I would just play here a lot. Unfortunately, the Cromwell does not have a poker room. And uh, I hope they, I wish they did because they're actually, it's actually a really nice uh, renovation that they did uh, on the inside. Yeah, I'm in the game for one hour. It, I have a really great position on the table. Um, some of the better players are on my right. Uh, weaker players are on my left. Uh, there was a couple of hands. Um, $220 deep. There are three limps ahead of me. I'm in the cutoff. I look down at ace jack offsuit. I raise it up to $13. Everyone but one player folds. The flop comes ace king nine. Not too bad of a flop. Uh, ace high with a medium kicker. Middle position player checks. I go ahead and I bet $15 and he calls. Now the turn brings the king of hearts, so pairs the king. And uh, I decide to check it, try to do a little pot control and call off every river. This player was brand new to the table, so I didn't really know how he was playing, so it checks through. The river brings the six, and he decides to bet out $25. There's already about $63 in the pot, so I go ahead and I make the call, and unfortunately he has king-queen. So for that hand, um, pretty standard. I think if he goes a little bit higher, I could find a fold on the river, but I think I'm calling that majority of the time. Uh, I wake up with six, seven offsuit in the small blind. Uh, I have about $120 because I just lost that pot that just happened. So there are three limps ahead of me. I complete my small blind and the big blind checks his option. The flop comes ace, four, nine, rainbow, and it checks all the way around. The turn brings the five, so I'm now open-ended to a bigger straight. And uh, I go ahead and check, and the big blind leads out for five dollars. Uh, two players call, the button folds, and I go ahead and I make the call as well, hoping to spike my eight. The river brings the eight of diamonds, and I actually have a read on one player specifically at the table. Um, it seemed like every time that he had a hand, he was getting ready to go all in. And uh, when the eight landed, I was looking at him particularly, and uh, he made this motion of like grabbing, like stacking all of his chips, getting ready to go all in. I decide to lead out for $35. The big blind ends up folding, and the middle position instant shoves. I snap it off, and uh, he shows down ace eight offsuit for the river two pair, and uh, it's not good enough for my river straight. Yeah, that's my mid-session update. Let me go back inside, let me play, and uh, it's fun. It's been fun. Uh, there's a lot of people, you can tell that there's a lot of uh, tourists here, um, especially for CES. Unfortunately, a lot more of the tourists are at other tables, but, I'm, but I have a solid spot, so I'm really happy about that. And my chip stack's sitting at around 220 bucks. So I was at 200, dropped down to 120, and now I'm at 220. So let's just keep dry, grinding up. Let's go find great spots. Um, I feel really good playing today. This past hour, not so many hands. I did a whole bunch of folding, and I managed to lose $20. So I'm gonna go take a walk. Hopefully when I get back, wake up with some cards. Um, the player on my direct left got up and was replaced by a pretty aggressive player, uh, but he just lost heaps. He lost heaps after another player sat down uh, and just, he couldn't beat that other player. And uh, as soon as he got all the money, he stood up and left. So excuse the uh, titty bar people, but anyway. All right, y'all, I'm done. Session's over. After the second break, I was planning on picking up after an hour, and every single time that I was about to leave, um, some pristine opportunities came up. Uh, a couple of easier players uh, sitting down. Uh, there was a guy that just started getting out of line, trying to play every single pot, trying to get back to even. He bought in for a hundred to start, and then he rebought another hundred. And I can tell that he was really trying to get even, so he was playing basically every single hand. So I wanted to take advantage of that. So I was watching this player who just sat down. I think he was like drunk out of his mind, and I was about to pick up because I had about like 240 to 30 bucks. So I wanted to book the win after a four-hour session, and. Uh, 
he ended up stacking a player that was one of the players that I was staying at the table for. So he stacked him for like 200 bucks. He bought in for 200 bucks, stacked him, and uh, won another small pot. So his stack was like at $450 or something like that. But what he stacked him with was with like seven high or something like that. I wasn't really paying attention because I was actually getting ready to go. And then I get dealt ace 10 offsuit. So I'm on the button. I have about $230 in front of me. And I have ace 10 suited, or ace 10 offsuit. The under the gun player, who is the drunk player, he limps in, folds around to me, and I raise it up to $10. The big blind calls, and the under the gun player calls as well. So the flop comes ace high, ace seven nine rainbow. Pretty good flop, checks around to me, I make a continuation bet of $15. The big blind folds, and uh, the drunk guy calls. The turn brings the seven of diamonds, and this time the under the gun player decides to lead out for $25. And I'm trying to think like, is there a lot of sevens in his range? Which is very unlikely because there's already two on the board. And uh, is he really limping his ace type of hands pre-flop? So I decided to make the call and uh, hoping to just call off any river. There's not a lot of rivers that can scare me off. And I'm still well ahead of all his like ace rag ranges that he decides to limp or just his absolute nonsense. So I make the call and the river is just a blank, it's a deuce. And uh, he decides to lead out for $80. I snap it off, and uh, he shows down Queen Jack offsuit. So I was right on that one. So after that hand, um, that was like, I was up to about like $330, so that was like about a $100 hand to me. And um, literally, I was like, okay, let me just wait another orbit, but that didn't happen. The very next hand, I get dealt ace-king offsuit. So the action goes like this. We're playing six-handed, folds around to me, and I raise it up to $12. The button folds, small blind folds. The big blind, who is the drunk player, actually ends up raising. So because I know that he could be playing a lot of cards or a lot of hands wide, and he could be a little crazy at times, plus he probably is steaming from the hand that we were playing earlier, I decide to raise it up to a hundred bucks. So I put the four bet in, hoping to just get it in on the on you know pre-flop. I have a premium hand and premium against this specific player. He doesn't even think about it, and he's like stumbling for the past couple of hands. He was stumbling, doesn't know what the fuck was going on. So he asked the dealer how much, and he just puts however many chips, and the dealer had to cut out the hundred dollars and um, put it into the middle. So we're heads up to a flop and the flop comes 3-3-3 three, three, three. and at this point I don't really want to uh, continue on with this hand plus for me to raise a hundred dollars and for him to call pre-flop like I'm repping some pretty good hands yeah so he just he looks at the board he's like wow 3-3-3 three, 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 and uh, finally makes the check checks it over to me and I instant shove all in and my thought process is I'm still ahead of some of his garbage ace queen, ace jack, ace 10 range to be three, three betting me pre-flop. I'm putting him in a situation that he has to think about if he had pocket like eights or pocket sevens. Uh, like I'm really heavily leaning towards aces or kings in the line that I took. So I shove all in for $230 and he just says I can't call and he makes the fold. And uh, as he's folding, he's still super drunk and he doesn't know what's going on. And uh, he flashed his cards, but it landed face down in the muck. So I asked, oh, what did he have? And the dealer said, oh, well, it's in the muck. Uh, if he wants to show, he can show. And he was just like, oh, I don't care, like show. So she gave it back. She gave the cards back to him. He didn't end up showing. He folds and I take down that pot. So playing hours and hours and hours and grinding, Staying at the 200 mark, I was able to cash a win today. Uh, ultimately, one of the players next to me said that he saw an ace. So maybe like ace jack, ace queen, something like that. I'll be surprised if he folded ace king there or didn't continue. Um, he only had about the same amount left. So he only had like 200 something dollars left. So I was definitely just sizing him up. But nonetheless, I am happy. I booked a win, $200 win. Was in for 200 bucks, out for 400. Dealers were great. The dealers were great. The players were mixed. So I had like probably one or two other good players at my table. 
and uh, another couple of players who, you know, like to gamble and were probably brand new to the game. So that's a, another reason why I stayed a little bit longer than I wanted to, is uh, as we got shorthanded, I felt like my edge started to increase because I was comfortable playing shorthanded and one of the guys kept just straddling on the button, under the gun, over and over and over again, and he only had like 70 bucks. So that's how I ended up stacking him. I only had like 180. I stacked him, got my stack to 230, and then those two hands happened back to back against the drunk guy. Then I hung out for a little bit longer, and I packed it up. But uh, yeah, the, the room was cool, uh, interesting location. I definitely would play there again. Uh, especially during the times when all those drunk people are coming out of drays and they're walking by the front a lot of them ended up buying at the poker table so there was a lot of you know party people that was coming to the tables at around like 2 2 30 or something like that but we were playing five-handed for such a long time until the game started to fill up and then I felt comfortable leaving I didn't really want to break the game because if I were to leave they would have been playing four-handed but luckily more players came that's why I got up and uh, packed it up uh, good start to 2020 and um, Yeah, it was fun, but the couple hour session turned into a five hour session It's about like three o'clock or some shit now, but uh, I have an all day uh, I'm actually going rock climbing all day tomorrow, so I better get my ass home Like always if you guys like what you see hit the sub button below thumbs up if you like the video thumbs down If you didn't hit me up with a comment. I'm gonna be out in LA in a couple of weeks I'm gonna play at the commerce and uh, the bike so I'm gonna be out in LA just for a weekend I think in two weekends from now to play a couple of sessions just to experience poker outside of Vegas and um, yeah give me something to do but I'll see you guys in the next video and uh, yeah good session today at the Flamingo Another thing is that I have to mention is the speed of some of the dealers at the Flamingo is pretty sick. Like there were two back-to-back -back dealers that were just boom, boom, boom on point, making change fast, dealing the hands out, making that money. And I personally like that. Um, and I think I only had one bad experience with one of the dealers, but I played with probably like eight or nine of them. So overall, go down to the Flamingo if you wanna play at a strip property that's not as crazy as the Bellagio or the Aria. I would rate it in the same area as like Mirage or Planet Hollywood. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely a fun room. Come check it out if you